For the past year or so, my preferred FPV action camera has been the Action 2. I've been very impressed with its sturdy construction and lightweight magnetic design, which allow me to use it on all of my drones regardless of their size. However, the lack of ability to stabilize footage in post was holding it back. Typically, the industry standard is to use Real Steady Go for GoPros and Gyroflow for other action cameras, which is available for free. Although the Action 2 has excellent inbuilt stabilization with Real Steady, I wasn't completely satisfied with the outcome. Luckily, DJI recently released a firmware update that enables gyro data in the video files and the use of third party software such as Gyroflow. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to update to the latest firmware, how to include gyro data in your video files, and finally, how to import them into Gyroflow. Let's get started. First up, we need to update the firmware on our Action 2 to the latest version. To do this, we'll use the DJI Mimo app, so if you haven't got it yet, pause the video and download it. Next, you want to turn on your Action 2 and connect it to the app via Bluetooth. If your device needs an update, you'll see a notification in the top left of the screen. The update process will take a few minutes, so while that's happening, let's get Gyroflow sorted. Head to their website, download the file and unzip it. You can put the folder anywhere you like. Once the Action 2 update is done, we can move on to getting Gyro data onto our video files. After resetting the camera, swipe up to bring up the video settings. To enable gyro data, we need to turn off Rocksteady in the top right corner. Now we can see when gyro data will be recorded. For this to work, we need to be either in 4K, 4x3 aspect ratio or 16x9 with the displayed frame rate range. We also need to be in wide angle. So go back to the home screen, swipe to the left and bring up the field of view settings. Here we want to select wide angle as our field of view. If you only see one option here and you want more control, you can enable Pro Mode in the settings. From now on, whenever a video is recorded in the selected settings, gyro data will be written onto our video file. After you've recorded some fresh footage, head back to Gyroflow by opening the .exe file. If you're new to Gyroflow, it generally works from left to right and top to bottom. Drag in your video file and you'll see information about the file and the camera on the top left. Here you can immediately tell if there is usable gyro data in the file you provided. If you see no, try a different video file or check your recording settings. In Gyroflow 1.5, the lens setting should already be automatically selected for you. In the motion data section, you can adjust the settings for rotation and orientation of your data. If you record with a different camera like the Runcam Orange or you have data from your black box, the gyro data will be in a separate file and you'd have the option to select it here. But since our file already had the required gyro data, we're good here. Normally we would use the synchronization option to synchronize our gyro data and the video data together, but in this case, it's actually recommended to skip that section. Okay, let's quickly pause the video here. Even though Gyroflow gives you a warning here that's displayed on screen, you should actually turn the setting on. And this I figured out while editing, while watching a new Joshua Bodwell video where he goes very into depth how to use Gyroflow, and I'll link that one in the description. So let's unpause the video. Now onto the stabilization settings. Here we can select the stabilization type and adjust the field of view, which controls how much of the image will be cropped in order to stabilize it. One of the great things about Gyroflow 1.5 are the red indicators in the timeline down here. These show up if the field of view ever gets too low and you start seeing edges from the cropping. We can also adjust the smoothness, which controls how much the video is going to be stabilized. But if we crank this up too high, we'll start to see a lot of zoom to compensate. Another option here is to lock the horizon. This option is similar to the inbuilt option on the Action 2, which keeps the horizon level. Finally, we have some video and export settings with options like lens correction, video speed, file format, output size, bitrate, and some more. Once we're done, we can specify where we want to export our video to and hit export. This will take a bit, but once it's done, we've successfully used the Action 2 with Gyroflow to stabilize our FPV footage. So to recap, update your Action 2 to the latest firmware, disable Rocksteady, select the right video settings and wide angle field of view, load the file into Gyroflow, check for gyro data and edit your footage. I hope this helped you out, like if it did, sub if you want to see more FPV content and I'll catch you in the next video.